All right, in this video, we're going to have a look at a few more anomalies within a pulse system. Um, there are some guys out there that think I have forgotten uh, where I all started and the experiments I used to do, and everything that I learned has been forgotten, and everything that I've seen has been forgotten within these systems, and I've simply fallen in line and agree with what the uh, electronic engineers and the gurus on forums are telling me. Well, that is not the case. What you don't see is the research that goes on behind the research. Um, I haven't forgotten. I look and um, listen to what others have to say and um, I take that into account but at the end of the day um, my understandings come from my own systems so um, I have definitely not forgot um, in what I believed in when I first started all right so just to uh, just wanted to clear that up um, we're going to run through this system there's been some changes and um, that is uh, so I can establish a more stable waveform and we can get more accurate readings. Uh, we're still using our 12 volt battery as our power supply. I simply stuck this little analog meter on there. It's a new battery, only a couple of months old. It's on 13 volts, so very healthy. I have um, my ever trusty amp meter on here. I've proven time and time again that these meters are very accurate in reading pulsed currents up to a value of about 10 kilohertz. In this case we are running at 100 hertz. Um, so what this is telling you is absolutely true. What this is also going to tell you is that our CVR lies. Um, okay, so we're going to leave that off um, in the first part of the test. Now, I've disconnected my trigger coil and I've also removed the rotor. Our system is now going to be pulsed uh, using my function generator set at 100 Hz square wave 30% duty cycle. Now because I am now using my signal generator to fire the transistor um, I've had to change our CVR and our little light bulb here over to the negative side um, of our system because my scope and signal generator share a common ground. So now I'm limited to where I can put my scope and what I can scope across the system but um, we're basically doing the same whereas we're scoping across the CVR and across our little incandescent bulb in there. Um, and same as last video, the solar panel will show us an increase or decrease in um, dissipated power in the form of heat and light from that incandescent bulb. And as you've seen in the last video, somehow we managed to put more current through that bulb, but dissipate less power across it. Uh, this also allows me to um, show you another hiccup with using CBRs to measure pulse systems as, as such. Um, so what we're actually doing in this case is removing the uh, rotating magnets that are going past our inductor and um, we will see if that makes any difference. Piece by piece we'll, we'll eliminate um, bits and pieces until such time as we find an answer as to what is going on. Okay, so we're coming from the negative of the battery going through our CVR, out of our CVR, through our light bulb, out of our light bulb, which is now the pink trace, which will be a ground, and through to our U-butte cap here that the ground picks up on, and then the ground continues on to the emitter of our transistor, as per usual. I have both the scope grounds hooked to um, 
what will be well it depends which way we're going to look at it if we're using um, conventional current flow this will be our output um, and those two scope grounds are in common with our signal generator ground it's just that the um, signal generator ground won't reach all the way over here but as you can see it is on the same wire so all three share the same ground point. The yellow channel 1, the yellow channel is across our globe. That once again we'll be measuring the voltage across the globe. But only this time because of my common ground. And the blue channel is measuring purely the voltage across the CVR. Before it's going to be measuring the voltage across the globe and the CVR. So all we have to do is subtract the average voltage across our globe from the average voltage across the globe CVR series circuit and that will give us the average voltage across our CVR which is a 10 watt 1 ohm CVR. Why around? Yes, but at these low frequencies shows no inductive properties at all. So we should be getting a very accurate reading from that CVR at 100 Hz. Okay, so, um, and the rest of it is basically the same. This meter here will be showing us the voltage across our little resistor here, which I think is 680 ohms. Looks to be blue, grey, brown, something like that. Um, and that also will indicate um, either a rise or a drop in dissipated power from our bulb. So I'll close our little box back up. And as you can see, we have zero volts, zero volts across there, which means no ambient lights getting in onto our solar panel. Okay, so um, we're simply going to fire the system up now by switching on our U-Butte signal generator. And now we can work with a very clean waveform that's not jumping around moving. And we can get some very stable... Uh, readings from that. Okay, so at the moment our um, system does not have the cap across the emitter and our positive input to our um, inductor and that is why we are seeing pulses. Um, so at the moment we have 21.9, so 22 milliamps, uh, millivolts um, across our little load resistor that is on our solar panel and remember the light bulb in there is fairly dull um, the small solar panel is very small so the output is going to be very low but we will see a change in output from the bulb according to the voltage there okay so now we can have a look at the voltage across our globe and across our CVR and we can see we have 2.6 volts on average across our globe which is our main voltage we have 2.8 volts across the globe resistor combo so we subtract channel 1 from channel 2 and that gives us 20 millivolts difference this being a 1 ohm resistor with 20 millivolts across it so it's, we're using 20 milliamps of current apparently okay so um, 2.6 volts across our globe and 20 millivolts across our CVR and we are at 13, uh, 13 volts um, from our battery alright so um, once again 21.7 millivolts across a little load resistor here that is across our solar panel um, we need to uh, know that exactly and um, being able to raise the frequency slightly and get these waves very smooth um, without them jumping around has had some other effects which we're about to see okay so now once again just remember these measurements 2.6 volts across our globe on average 
2.8 volts across the globe CBR on average uh, which gives us 20 millivolts across our CBR which gives us a current flow of 20 milliamps apparently alright so now we're going to bring the cap in now remember the cap everything here is after our CBR and our globe that's the first line of attack if we use electron current flow or true current flow we know the current all the electrons are flowing from the negative going through our CBR through our light bulb and then into the rest of the system so all of this from this box back is behind the CBR and the globe whatever is going into the system has to travel through this CBR and the globe <coughs> we have now hooked up the cap you can now see that the light output or the dissipated power from our light globe has severely dropped I'll just switch that back on, timed out ok so apparently we now have less current flowing through the light globe so let's have a look at our scope we see two things that do not add up here first of all our scope once again is telling us we now have 3.6 volts across our globe that is one oddity that doesn't agree with the output from our solar panel secondly you'll see we now have 3.8 volts across our globe resistor combo we take channel 1 from channel 2 to get the voltage across our CBR you can now see we are still at 20 millivolts so how do we raise the voltage across the globe without raising the current flowing through it when that globe is an incandescent bulb so once again I'll disconnect the cap 21.7 millivolts across our load resistor on the solar cell which is telling us our globe is dissipating more power in the form of heat and light um, 2.6 volts on average across our globe 2.8 volts on average across our globe and CVR still 20 millivolts across the CVR once again we hook up a cap globe is tied in the arse rather badly which is telling us less power is now being dissipated by that globe which means less current must be flowing through it now we have a higher voltage across our globe but the current flowing through that CVR apparently is still exactly the same okay so let's disconnect that Let's see if our amp meter here agrees with what our CVR is telling us. Okay, so we see a discrepancy here straight up. So our amp meter is telling us we have 96 milliamps. And I can guarantee you these are very accurate. But our CVR still says we only have 20 millivolts across it, which is 20 milliamps. Twenty one point six millivolts across our load resistor on our solar panel. We hook up our cap. Now our globe is telling us that the current flow has decreased through it. Our CBR is saying no, the current flow remains at 20 milliamps. But our multimeter is saying no, the current has gone up by 60 odd milliamps. So, um, this is apparently accurate. This apparently doesn't know what the hell is going on. And this globe is doing exactly the opposite to what it should be doing. So 
that's going to be it for this video. Um, next, we're going to um, remove the inductor from the circuit and we're simply going to pulse um, our globe with current, measure the output and the input via our CBR and um, voltage across our CBR globe combo and then we're going to send um, the equivalent to this um, 3.6 volts well we're simply not going to achieve 3.6 volts across the globe at 20 milliamps I can tell you that right now it's not going to happen so our CBR is not telling us the truth but um, what we will do is we'll keep cranking up our DC current until such time as we reach 7.1 or 7 millivolts and then we'll keep increasing that current until we reach our, uh, what was it, 21 millivolts, something like that 22, so we'll say 7 millivolts and 22 millivolts and we will compare results with tonight's test what do you think is going to happen when we remove the inductor from the system um, are there any out there that believe in vacuum energy thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll see you next video i hope that's messed things up really good for you